Today I'd like to talk about Azimpic. My name is Dr. Sultan Linjawi. I'm a certified diabetes specialist and endocrinologist. So let's talk about Azempic or semaglutide. Uh, so semaglutide is a once weekly injection for people with diabetes. It's something called a GLP-1 analog, and I'll explain a little bit what GLP-1 is. But in essence, it looks very similar to a naturally occurring chemical that we all produce that helps us regulate our appetite as well as our blood sugar levels. And this treatment is for people with type 2 diabetes, uh, where it's been tested and investigated fairly heavily. It's not approved for people with type 1 diabetes and shouldn't be taken in women who are pregnant or breastfeeding. And it's ill-advised at the moment to be using it in children. So what is a GLP-1? Well, GLP-1 is an extremely powerful chemical that's produced in response to eating by our gut. And it does a number of things, but there are four main actions. So the first is that when the chemical is released, it circulates into our system and it gets to our brain. And there it leads to uh, reduced appetite. It's the, it's the thing that people experience when they've eaten too much, where suddenly they feel they've, they're just over full. That sense of uh, sickness or, or fullness that you might feel if you engorged yourself is actually GLP-1 hitting the brain and saying that's enough. Now, some people seem to produce fantastic GLP-1 responses that are really effective. Generally, people that are thinner, they stop eating a lot more quickly. But we know that in people with type 2 diabetes, that sense is often impaired. And if you give someone GLP-1, you can switch off the appetite to some extent and achieve some weight reduction. Now, how else does it work in the body? Well, in the liver, it reduces the amount of glucose or sugar that's released by the liver. The normal situation for a person would be to release sugar into the circulation unless you don't need it. But in type 2 diabetes, there's impaired release of glucose out of the liver. Continually, the stores are being released into the circulation, even though the blood sugar level is elevated. So the third mechanism of action is around slowing stomach emptying and slowing what we call gastric emptying. And that process leaves food in the stomach for longer. Therefore, there's ne less necessity to go looking for food. And finally, the action is around the effect on the pancreas, where GLP-1s both increase the amount of insulin that's produced as well as increase the amount that's released. And the interesting thing about it is that that is predominantly when the blood sugar is elevated. In other words, uh, GLP-1s and, uh, and there are a range of these treatments all have an effect which is predominantly around high sugars and if the sugar becomes low, the effect is switched off. And it's the reason we see very low rates of low blood sugars, so-called hypos or hypoglycemic episodes, that occur with GLP-1 treatments. So if you're on a Zimpig or semaglutide, uh, what dose should you use? Well, essentially, there are two doses uh, that are sort of prescribed and talked about. One is 0 0.5 milligrams, and the other one is 1 milligram. Um, and the way we take it, well, this is how you start taking it. In the clinical trials, it was a weekly injection, and they started at 0 0.25 milligrams a week, and that was for four weeks. And at the end of four weeks, and predominantly that was around getting used to the drug, but at the end of four weeks, the dose was increased to 0 0.5 milligrams weekly. And for many people, that is an extremely effective dose. In fact, for some people, the lower dose is still going to be highly effective in terms of 0 0.25, and there may not be a need to increase the dose, even though the clinical trials suggested that that's what needed to happen. We do not know what the actual effect of 0 0.25 is. Now, if 0 0.5 milligrams isn't enough, and you wait it sometimes, and the blood sugars are still not where they need to be, then we do have the option of increasing it to the 1 milligram dose. So it's a stepwise process, 0 0.25 initially for four weeks to get used to it, then 0 0.5 milligrams. And if that's the dose for you, fantastic. But if you need escalating further, then up to one milligram. But I, I want to say this, because I think this is important. 
A Zempic will take five weeks to get going and get into your system. It won't reach what we call steady state until that time. Its main effect won't be felt for 12 to 24 weeks. So if you think, I'm going to take this drug and in two or three days my sugars are going to be perfect, that's not how it works. So you have to wait for its effect to have, so you can make those judgments about when you need to increase the dose. And if you stop it, it clears the system or the body in about four or five weeks. So how does Azimpic compare to other GLP-1 therapies? Well, I think it's just worth mentioning there are a lot of GLP-1 treatments available at the moment, and uh, some of them you'll be familiar with. There are weekly versions and daily versions. The weekly versions that we're looking at are things like Trulicity, which is called Dulaglutide, or Bigerian, which is known as Exenatide, uh, extended release. And then we have daily versions, and daily versions would be Liraglutide or Bieta, and maybe the, the only other agent that's used a bit is Lixizenatide. So we have quite a bit of options in terms of GLP-1 treatments. And most of those options have been tested and looked at. So the first study I'm going to show you is this one. And this was looking at whether or not Azempic worked. And it was comparing Azempic to a placebo, so a dummy injection. And across the whole of this image, uh, the light blue bars are the low 0.5 milligram dose of semaglutide, and the dark blue bars are one milligram. And you can see that both of the Azempic doses lowered HbA1c by around 1.5, 1.6% compared to placebo. Incredibly effective. Compared to Bigerian or Exenatide extended release, the one milligram dose lowered the HbA1c by about 1.5%, compared to Exenatide at 0.9, so there was about a 0.6% reduction. Ozempic was superior. They compared it to insulin, and in this case, insulin glargine or Lantus. And you can see whilst Lantus was effective at lowering the blood sugar by about 0.8% of an HbA1c, again, there was superiority in both the 0.5 and 1 milligram dose of semaglutide. And the only drug that really got close, and it really did get very close, and there's a reasonable comparison, is Trulicity or Dulaglutide. And there are two different doses of uh, Trulicity, as there are two different doses of Ozempic, but to both ends, it looks like Ozempic was superior by about 0.4 milligrams. So that's impressive, because Trulicity is a very, very effective drug for many, many people. Well, what about weight loss? We talked about the fact that these drugs are exceptionally impressive at weight reduction, and in fact, out of all the drugs that we have, to date in the GLP-1 category, Ozempic seems to be the most effective around weight reduction. And if you just look at this graph, anything above the line is a weight increase. So you can see that in the middle there with the little green mark there around uh, insulin glargine, which put on a bit of weight. But across all the other drugs uh, and the other trials, there was weight reduction and consistently it looks like there was a weight loss of between three and a half and six and a half kilograms favoring Ozempic with the bigger weight loss seen in the higher dose. So what are the side effects of Ozempic? Well, uh, the common side effects are nausea, diarrhea, vomiting, abdominal pain, and decreased appetite. Now that's what was reported, but in fact, if you talk to people who are using it, it is that sense of fullness. That's just that queasy feeling that you have if you've eaten too much. Imagine going to a wedding and just stuffing your face and then someone saying, would, would you like another dessert? And just thinking, no, I can't eat any more. That's the sensation that you get with GLP-1 therapies. And it's experienced by about 10 to 20% of people, but the vast majority of these symptoms settle after around about eight to 12 weeks in most people. And if somebody were in a situation where they felt nauseated, there is no reason that they need to escalate from 0.25 milligrams up to five milligrams until that nausea has settled. Because it's a very powerful drug and it would be a shame if we gave up on it because the side effects were bad in the first week or two and we didn't find a way to persist. Now there are a few serious side effects that are noted. So there's a, always a concern with the GLP-1s around inflammation of the pancreas that is 
extremely rare. Low blood sugars are unlikely but possible. And of course, there are allergic reactions. So there's a Zimpic, a new treatment that's being launched all over the world that is uh, for people with type 2 diabetes that seems to not only lower blood sugars, but also uh, in lowering blood sugars, uh, leads to some weight loss. There's some good evidence also that in people who have cardiovascular risk factors, in other words, people who are either susceptible to heart attacks and strokes or people who've had one in the past, this reduces the likelihood of having a further event by around 25-26%. Uh, that's in common with a number of other GLP-1 drugs. So these are really powerful agents that are really helping us as healthcare professionals provide great care and outcomes to people with diabetes and certainly a great tool if you have diabetes to help you moving forward because with the benefits of weight loss and the reduction in blood sugar being so powerful and the potential benefit of reducing heart attacks and strokes, this is part of the future of diabetes that's here right now.